and I'm going to talk about the Los Angeles Lakers, mm. also a team that, or mm. a front office, ownership group, mm. GM, I don't know, is it Rob Palinka? Is it Jenny Buss? Is it LeBron James? Who are mm. a little um, out of touch with the roster that they have and the mm. expectations and what can be done. They fired Darvin Ham. They fired Darvin Ham just after we did the show. I was uh, here with Mike Smith on Friday. We did the show on Friday. And right after we ended the show, uh, Darvin Ham is fired. And I said, I can't mm -hmm. wait to talk about this. So first year, rookie coach. He's never been a head coach before. Rookie head coach, Darvin Ham. Mm -hmm. uh, first year, they take on the Nuggets in the conference finals. Mm -hmm. The Lakers got to the conference finals a season after they won, what, 33, 35 games, whatever, the year before Darwin got there. They beat the Warriors in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. They take out the number two seed, Memphis Grizzlies, in the playoffs. And then they, you know, Western Conference Finals, they got what their roster deserved, a sweep. Right. At right. the hands of the Denver Nuggets. This mm -hmm. year, bad start, get off to a bad start, turn it around. And oh, hey, congratulations. You know who you draw in the first round? The Denver Nuggets. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right, your right. roster is really not much better than it was last year when you overachieved. But you just got Denver at a different time. And so now Darvin Ham after two postseasons is fired. I'm asking you, Vinny Goodwill, why? Why? Can you tell me? Well, Michael Holly, the answer is complicated. Because mm, I believe okay. you can make the case. I believe you can make the case to fire 20 of the 30 NBA coaches if you want to. You fire someone not because you have to. You fire someone because you want to. You can say two things. You can say that Darvin Ham was both scapegoated and also possibly not the person who could lead the Lakers into a championship iteration next season, right? You can say that he was scapegoated because he didn't select Jalen Hood Safino in the first round of the NBA draft with Jaime Hawkes Jr. coming right behind him, with Brandon Pazemski right behind him. One of those two guys would have helped. You know, he wasn't the guy that signed Cam Reddish or Christian Wood, you know, two guys who were not contributors for the Lakers this year. You're going to look at Darvin Ham and you're going to say, Darvin, the margin of error was very thin for you this season. And after the in-season tournament, and they go 2-8 and eight or whatever it was, and he benches Austin Reeves, he benches D'Angelo Russell, if that seals his fate, right? Let's just say that sealed his fate because that put them in a position where they're in the play and that put them in a position where you have to play the Denver Nuggets and you lose. I think they were going to lose in the first round no matter who they played. They were going to lose to Oklahoma City if they played them. They were. They were going to lose to Minnesota if they played them, as evidenced by what we're seeing from Minnesota right now. They were going to lose no matter who was there. But if the margin of error was so thin, not only should Darvin Ham, yes, have been fired, it means he shouldn't have been hired in the first place. If the margin of error is that thin because the roster ain't that good and you haven't done enough to upgrade the roster and the fact that your two best players are old and hurt, then he didn't have a chance to begin with and maybe he didn't necessarily help himself. Two things can be true at the same time. Okay, so uh, so I, I get it. All right, complicated. Um, and this is going to sound ridiculous, but we're going on the same path as I look at your feed. Ten coaches in twenty years for LeBron James. Um, we suspect that LeBron has a tremendous say. Especially, I, I'll, I'll give him. I'll, I'll I'll give him a pass on two of the ten. Early in Who? his career. Who? Mate, but but still, I, I, that's a reach. Who? Even, what two? He what probably two? had something what to say two? about Paul Silas, right? He had something to I say mean, about Paul Silas' first coach? Maybe. Maybe. Right? Okay. <laughs> he has something to say about who's coaching him. And we know he loves talking about basketball, and he has very strong opinions about how the game should work. And we suspect that not only is he a, a, a brilliant player, he's a coach 
on the floor, in the huddle, in the locker room, on the plane. Mm. <laughs> only, the only coaching thing he doesn't do is talk to the media regularly as in the, in, in the official position of coach, but he does a lot of that right, too. Right, and right, he's right. an executive. And he's an yep, executive. He's it. put teams together. So this sounds crazy. Why wouldn't he be in this era? He could be a player coach if he wanted to deal with the accountability of it. Now, mm -hmm. pro, uh, as mm -hmm. far as mechanics of it, mechanics are fine. Because when Bill mm -hmm. Russell was a player coach in the 1960s, Red Hour back to Bill Russell, hey, you coach yourself, Russell. Uh, he ain't have, a, they were no second row of coaches. They weren't like teams of trainers and video people and all this support. It was just a bunch of dudes and their Chuck Taylors, their low cut Chuck Taylors, and maybe a coach or two holding a clipboard. That's it. And, and Dave Cowens was a player coach for a while in the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, and same thing. But Magic did it. Dab are you suggesting? For a bit. Are you su suggesting? Bring it on. That LeBron James. You can do it. Should be the player it coach. It could be done. Yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely not. He could do it. He got absolutely the support not. for it. The only obstacle was accountability. Mm, and accountability that's why. Accountability is the if only you obstacle. If you become the head coach, you have nobody to blame. And that's right. why. That's why there won't be. But I, I think it. There are only thirty of these jobs, so you have to be careful with that. But I wonder what head coach is worth their salt is going to look in and say, you know what? I would want to take this dead end job because I don't know who signs up for 60 games of LeBron James, maybe 65 games of Anthony Davis, an ill fitting roster. Like, OK, maybe they get Trey Young this offseason. Right. Does that make them markedly better? Does that turn them from a 47 win team to a 55 win mm -hmm. team? Nope. I don't know. I don't I don't think it I don't think it does. I don't think that. Trey Young is that much better than D'Angelo Russell. He is better, but I don't know if he's that much better that turns you from being a play-in team, which, you know, they've been a play-in team for quite a few years now. Like, they've, they've been the play-in team. They've been the, the signature play-in team <laughs> since the play-in has begun, right? Right. Like, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, Bomani Jones, calls the play-in the LeBron James Invitational. Like, that's what it's turned out to be. <laughs> See, Bomani's over the past right few years, that. you know, what I'm, hey, hey, but he ain't wrong. He he may not be right, but he ain't wrong. <laughs> he ain't so right. When you, but he ain't wrong <laughs> either. But he ain't wrong. So when you look at it, you have to. I'm, I, the question is, what is the profile of a Laker coach that you want? Do you want a veteran coach who's been there, done that before? Or are you kind of worried about that? You know what I mean? Or do you want a young coach that you can mold? The problem is with young coaches that young coaches are going to make first time head coaching mistakes. And that roster is not built in such a way that it can absorb first-time coaching mistakes. I'll tell you this. Steve Kerr was not a great coach when he first took over for Golden State. He wasn't. Huh. He just They just handed him the keys to a Ferrari, and he had a system that the players could kind of, you know, factory override some of the, you know, growing pains of being a head coach. Like when you saw the 2016 Warriors in the playoffs and in the NBA Finals, Tyron Lue ran circles around Steve Kerr from a coaching standpoint. But Steve Kerr learned and has become a much better coach throughout time. I think that happens with first-time head coaches. You go through it, you learn, you make mistakes, but sometimes your team isn't good enough to override your mistakes. I don't know if the Lakers will ever be good enough to override a first-time head coach's mistakes that inevitably the first-time head coach is going to make. So if that's the case, you have to go get an experienced guy. The problem is who takes the job knowing that you're only going to last maybe a year and a half, maybe two. This may be an unfair, um, it's not an unfair question. No questions are unfair. Um, maybe there are unfair an answers, but there are no unfair questions, I don't think, in this regard. Okay. When we come okay. to um, LeBron and the coaches, mm -hmm. do you, when, when we have our inevitable GOAT debates, and, and we, we, we spread it out a little bit. It's not just, you know, MJ versus LeBron. If we just talk about, like, the greatest players and why you think they're great, is this something that you hold against LeBron or any other great player where you've got to do all these things to get the field the way you want it to be? 
I already talked about he's, he's got to make the team the way he wants the team to be. Um, uh, he's got to he's got to have the coaches be a, a certain way. And he kind of cycles through these coaches until he gets the fit for the moment. And I know magic had early in his career, magic had some uh, clashes with coaches, but magic yep. eventually settled yeah. in with Pat Riley. You know, you think magic, yep. you think Pat Riley, you think MJ, yep. you think Phil Jackson, you think of yep. Kobe and Shaq, you think of Phil Jackson again. And LeBron doesn't have that one coach is that to his advantage? Like, I'm so great. I don't need somebody's system to kind of be on my coattails. Or is it, uh, is it a negative that he's got to just be so involved? He's got to micromanage this thing to get what he wants. I think in some ways, LeBron is a victim of his own intelligence. You, like sometimes you have to be smart enough to realize that you're going to learn something from someone. But if you feel like you have all the answers, if you if you know you're the basketball genius, which LeBron is, his IQ is off the charts, right? Then no coach is ever going to be good enough. No coach is ever going to be able to reach that small part of your brain that doesn't know something and give you that knowledge. Like, you know, there's a trust factor. You, you, you talked about all these different coach and player combinations. Magic trusted Pat Riley. Michael Jordan trusted Phil Jackson. Shaq trusted Phil Jackson. Kobe didn't at first, but he came to trust <clears throat> Phil Jackson. LeBron has never meant a basketball mind who he's respected enough to follow. Like LeBron, if you ever notice, those players played in a system, right? And I've spoken about this before, but, you know, Michael played in a triangle offense, which was not the best offense for Michael Jordan's individual talents. It was the best offense for everybody around him. Magic Johnson was showtime, like the pace and all that other type of stuff, right? LeBron is a system unto himself, but has never fit in a system. And I think that's kind of been to his detriment. I think physically, mm. you can say talent-wise and everything else, the most gifted basketball player to ever play. But some things, sometimes that, you know, the margins are thin, and sometimes it's coaching, Sometimes it's system. Sometimes it's, you know, just individual things like, you know, Tyron Lue telling LeBron, go play some defense against Draymond Green when Draymond was lighting him up in game seven of the 2016 NBA finals and, and LeBron went and shut his water off. You know what I mean? Like it's little things. So you have, so LeBron has to listen to somebody, right. but if you're LeBron and you have all the answers, it's, it's almost like this. It's the, there's the best answer. And then there's the right answer. LeBron always knows the best answer but it's the best answer, the right answer. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's vice versa. Maybe I, maybe I mix metaphors again. You know what I mean? LeBron always knows the right thing to do, but it's the best thing to do. You know what I mean? And that's what I think sometimes yeah. comes into play here. He, it sometimes comes into play here. And I don't know what coach is going to have the intelligence, going to have the resume that's going to make LeBron stand down as he reaches, you know, 40, 41. Like that ain't old in life, but in basketball, that's old as hell. What are we doing here? Well, Shouldn't any time for him to go home and be a family man, why is he still playing? Hey, hey, hey he loves, loves the game, loves the game, wants to be out there, tell people what to do. Maybe he wants to get to 15 coaches, want to be the all time leading <laughs> scorer and the player who's played for the most coaches, too. Uh, but you know, you mentioned something like, oh, you know, his, his basketball mind, we've seen it, we've seen it, and we've so we've seen it as fans, but if you want a little bit more, we've seen it and heard it on his podcast with J.J. Reddick. And I've heard some people float the name J.J. Reddick. Now, I think that would mm. be a terrible idea for mm. J.J. Mm. <laughs> okay. Oh, J.J., this is a setup, bruh. It's a setup. Okay, terrible idea for him. I don't know if he's up for the job, but even if you are up for the job, bad idea. Terrible mm -hmm. job for the L.A. Lakers. I mean, ter terrible idea for the Lakers. Probably a good idea for now for LeBron. Because I don't know what his, uh, we talked about the floaters uh, last week. I don't know what his astrological sign is. I'm a Pisces. So I know, I don't know if he's a, he, what, what is he? It's December. He's got Capricorn or something like that. LeBron, I know Pisces LeBron's a, and Le, it, LeBron's a Capricorn. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what they're known for. I know Pisces, Aquarius. Like we go hot and cold on you in a second. 
LeBron mm. has got some Pisces tendencies. Okay, yeah, yes, it's a great idea. Uh, oh, ooh, ghost. <laughs> Go, oh, I could talk to him before. What, what happened? Hey, he was saying nice things about me. I think it would be an awful idea for J.J. Reddick, even though it seems like a good idea in May. Uh, by November or December, mm -hmm. he's cold on you. What do you think about that idea? Well, LeBron is a Capricorn, and I'm not big into the super big into the astrology stuff, but the Capricorns, I know they're controlling as hell. Like, that's the one thing that they got. They are controlling <laughs> as all hell. And maybe that's where you see this hot and cold stuff. It ain't hot and cold. It is controlling. And if you don't do what I want you to do, then I'll become cold on you. I'll be hot on you as long as you do what I say. That type of thing, right? But if J.J. Reddick comes in as an inexperienced head coach from doing a podcast with LeBron James, how much respect does he have in that locker room to start off with? If it's, it's kind of known that the stars will be able to pick the head coaches and everything else or save the head coaches. But a great relationship with Stephen Curry, right? But nobody looks at the Golden State Warriors and says, oh, Steph is coaching the team. No, Steve Kerr is coaching the team. Steph allows him to be coached. Will LeBron allow himself to be coached by someone that obviously he considers a friend and J.J. Redick and the peer. Like, that's a tough relationship to navigate. And, and, and how do you hold somebody accountable in that way who basically makes sure that you have your job? Like, as great of a player as LeBron James is, he still needs to be coached. He still needs to be held accountable. And if you bring in the coach, then that dismantles the relationship, that dismantles sort of, like the hierarchy, the way that the coach should be respected from day one. So while mm. it sounds like a good idea on paper, I think it would be a disaster, not necessarily just for LeBron, but for every other player on that roster. Because how are you going to be able to earn and maintain and develop respect with players on the roster when they feel like that LeBron is pulling your strings? Now listen, I got a couple of things from the control room that lead me right into our, our final mini topic. Because mm. okay. our, our, I say our final mini topic because mm. I feel like this, this will go somewhere. This will go somewhere. Okay. So okay. from the control room, you were talking about Steve Kerr and he wasn't a good coach in the beginning of his Warriors tenure. Natalie says he still ain't a good coach. <laughs> He's still, <laughs> he's yeah. set, he's still set, ain't made set, it. Set, set, set Natalie up right, right there. Boo-doo. <laughs> oh, I love it. Look, Nat okay. look, Natalie thinks Boyce Men is better than Jodeci. She she does not oh, have oh, no, no, wait, wait. Uh, credibility hey, in such things. We ain't starting to, we ain't starting to Drake Kendrick uh, beef here. We ain't getting diss tracks here. We ain't starting that thing. We ain't getting that going. No, no, okay. I'm just playing Natalie. I'm just playing Natalie. Okay. I'm joking. I'm just messing with you. And, and, and the second thing from the control room, uh, Gary Carter wants to know, is your ex a Capricorn? <laughs> the Whoa. way you talk about Capricorn, Whoa. No, we ain't controlling no, no, no. as hell. <laughs> okay. But, but it leads me to this. It leads me to I'm this. I'm a Sagittarius, and I, date, and I have dated Sagittarians before. That's what I will say. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and not that I have a, a, a memory of what, you know, typically, you know, what sign goes with what characteristic or trait, but I would think that's probably not a great idea. You know, whether you're Gemini, Gemini, Sagittarius, Sagittarius, that's probably risky. Yes. A little risky. Very much so. Okay. Very much so. Yes. The, the yes, the, the, the very simple, succinct yes tells me everything I need to know. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.